As you're, as you're seated, as you're being seated, I do think it's important. I want to do this with you guys. If we could, can we just say a prayer over Houston, if we can do that? Well, Father, we just pray for Houston and, and what is going on. God, we, we thank you, Lord, for all the firefighters, all the policemen that are out there trying to help people. Lord, we thank you for those neighbors that are helping one another, those guys flying the helicopters. Lord, we pray your protection and your peace and your provision. We thank you for your supernatural goodness, Father. God, I thank you, Lord, that you bless that city. I thank you for a quick recovery. Lord, we ask, Lord, let those waters recede and be gone. We love you today, Father. We know that you hear prayer and you answer prayer. So minister to those people. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, good morning, everybody. You guys look amazing, amazing, amazing. Listen, I want to get right into it. Thank you, fellas. I appreciate you. I want to get into it this morning. And um, I, I actually think it is unbelievably hilarious um, at, uh, you know, we, we just uh, appreciate all of our visitors today. And I'm thinking to myself with our visitors, out of all the times you could have possibly come for the first time you came today. And, and you're going to laugh in a moment, I think, because of what I'm going to be talking about. But, um, and, and we're going to get into uh, the handout that you received this morning in a moment. But what I want to talk to you today about is something that has probably affected each and every one of us in so many different ways. And unfortunately, it's affected us negatively. And so when we, when we become a Christian, when we receive Christ as Lord, what we are doing is we're saying, it, I call it a divine exchange, and that is Jesus, you lay down your life for me, because I know I'm a sinner. Like when I was 19 years old and I received Jesus, you didn't have to convince me that I was a sinner. I knew I was a sinner. I knew what I was doing. I knew how I lived and I knew what I was doing behind the scenes. And so when that person told me about Jesus, something supernatural happened. I was illuminated. I said, you know what? I need God in my life and I received Jesus. And I'm not going to tell you I saw a light. I saw uh, a flash or, you know, something it instantly downloaded that I felt like, whoa, but I will tell you that I just knew there was something different about me. And I started this, 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 this journey with God, but something happened to me that really, really changed me as well. I had drifted away from God and, um, and I just, I think it's important to lay a foundation of what I'm going to say to you in this teaching. I had drifted away from the Lord. I thought that I was living for God and I really wasn't. Uh, um, I was out doing a whole bunch of different things and it's not even worth talking about. But I was with my friend Mario and we were at, now this is how long ago this is because this is going to make you laugh, but I was with my friend Mario and we were at, back at his place and we were with two girls and we were watching the VHS video of New Jack City with Wesley Snipes. Everybody remembers that movie. You probably saw it on DVD and Blu-ray, but you know, back then it was VHS. <clears throat> and so we're watching this movie and I feel something in the pit of my stomach that I couldn't explain to you. I, like I said, I was just really not serving God and I felt this thing in, in the pit of my stomach and I couldn't explain to you what it was and it got worse and worse. And finally, you know, and I'm just, I, I like, when I tell stories, I like to be detailed and, and like I said, my mind was not on the things of God and I'm with this female and I knew I was feeling it and I know she was feeling it that I could have made a move on her and all of this is going on and then all of a sudden and this thing starts hitting me and I don't know what it is. So finally I couldn't take it anymore and I stood up at 2.30 in the morning and I started driving home and the girl looked at me like, man, what's up with that guy? He's, something's wrong with him because I just said, I got to go. And I started driving home and this thing kept, and I just, I was saying, what in the world is wrong with me? I don't feel sick. I don't feel, I don't feel depressed or anything like that. I just didn't know what was going on. And when I got to my house, my, in, in my house, uh, you know, the, the house was really wide. 
but not that deep. But my ha my room was back in the like sort of private area, so I sort of had my own little crib back there, and it was just my room and all this stuff, and separated from everybody. And I started to walk back there, and I just feel this thing, and all of a sudden I put my hand on my on the doorknob of my door, and when I walked in and took one step, I fell to my to my knees, and I began crying like I've never cried before. I never knew what the Bible meant when it said the word weep, you know, because weeping is just another level of crying. It's just where it's just uncontrollable. And I was crying, but I felt like I was crying from the pit of my, of my gut. And I was crying out. And in that moment, I, uh, I said these words and I said, God, I said, I tried everything in my life to fulfill me. I said, today, I give you my life. And when I said that in that moment, I wasn't a, a church kid. I didn't go to church at all. I wasn't raised in a Christian home or anything like that. So what happened next? I, I have no reference point to explain this to you. But as I prayed that prayer, I felt like someone stood over me and entered my room and they had a big jar of warm honey and it began to pour down from my head all the way down to my feet. When it got to my feet, I instantly stopped crying and I knew that I needed to serve God. And I was like, I got to find a church. I got to get with God. And, I, and there was one thing that I was doing a lot. I was stealing. I was stealing a lot. It was easy for me. And I said, you know what, I'm going to stop that. And from that day on, I've never stole a thing in my life. But what happened was, is that the Holy Spirit came into my room. And I had no, like I said, I had no reference point. And something changed in my life. And quickly, thank God, I found a great church. I found another brother who wanted to get closer to God. And we call that accountability. And he said, you want to be accountable? And I said, what does that mean? He's like, well, we just help each other draw closer to God. I said, I need that. I need that in my life. I had to let go of the relationships and the friendships that I had because, to be honest with you, I was about to go to jail with all the stuff that I was doing. And so, you know, so God rescued me, touched my life. Man, he just poured this thing on me. But now, what happens? And here's the thing that's awesome. And this, I want to say this to you guys. If you receive Jesus by faith into your heart, something supernatural happens. And that is God, the, the Bible says God makes his home inside of you. I, listen, that is so hard to sometimes fathom that God makes his home inside of you. God made his home inside of me. And in spite of my foolishness, in spite of all the stuff that I had to work out in my life, God was with me. But something began to change in this relationship. As I learned more about him and his character and his nature and the way he does things, my mind began to change. My actions began to change. Something started happening in me, my character. I started to develop something called character and integrity. Because what matter, it matters what you do in private, not just in public. And God began to, to work with me. And all of a sudden, as in my church, it was just such a great, great church. And they just taught a strong word. And, 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 and they began to talk about things. And I said, I want that in my life. I want that in my life. I want that in my life. I want to experience those things. So here's the thing. So one, I was involved in the youth group, and one time we went to the mountains in Pennsylvania. This is on the East Coast. My wife and I are from Florida originally. And we, were, we, we, we took buses up to Pennsylvania to the largest Christian festival in America. And we were there. We were there for like four days. God was just moving. We were singing worship songs, separated from everything, leaving my beeper at home. This is back in the day with beepers. I'm telling you, there's such things that really existed called beepers. Listen, so my beep, left my beeper at home and all these different things and 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 guess what when we got back when our youth group got back something exploded in our youth group and my youth pastor began to pray for people and supernatural things began to happen that I had never saw before now you got to remember I'm I'm a kid from the street so when I went to church and I saw people lifting their hands and I was like Man, what is going on? Why are they lifting their hands? I'm like, is something wrong? You know, is everyone under arrest? I mean, like, what's, what's the deal with people? I mean, I had no, like I said, I just didn't know. Like, I'm from the street. 
And so this thing begins to happen in our youth group. And once again, I see things and I'm like, I want that in my life. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a crazy subject. We're talking about it the first time today. I don't think I've ever taught this. At the, I've been here for three years, three months, and I don't think I've ever taught this thoroughly. But we're going to talk about something that the Bible talks about. It says the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. And so the reason why I want to lay a foundation with you guys, I don't know how, how much information I'll get with you guys today, but I will say this to you. Unfortunately, many of us have negative experiences, whether it's the joker that, that when you turn on the television at 2 o'clock in the morning and they're doing weird things and it looks weird and it feels weird, or maybe you've been to a service where just like, you know, you just were like, is that real? was that really God or was this people putting on a show where maybe, you know, like, do you know that when you receive God, you know that the Holy Spirit is in you? And a lot of times you don't have to know a lot about the Bible, but you can gauge things like, you know what? Something in me doesn't feel right about that. Something in, in me doesn't feel right about this. And something that God always planned for you and for me as believers is something that, listen, a lot of pastors and even churches shy away from. Listen, because people are like cereal. I call them cereal Christians. Nuts and flakes. Nuts and flake. Listen, we are flesh. And what happens is we take a biblical truth. We are notorious as the church for taking one biblical truth. And we stretch that sucker so much. Especially in the area of finances. We got people saying, if you do this, this is what God's going to do for you. Listen, I believe 100% in the prosperity of God. I believe in biblical prosperity. I don't believe in shows and manipulating the word, this precious word of God, so that you can gain. It has to be mutual. If God requires something of us, he's going to do something for us as well. God will never ask you to do anything that he's not going to do in your life or release something into your life. So here, here is, here's my springboard as before we get into the scripture. And I want you guys to hear this. If I never see you again, I want you to remember this for the rest of your life. Every time you read this, every single time, from the first page to the maps in the back, Every single thing about this is about one thing. Please hear me in the name of Jesus. It is about revealing Jesus Christ. It's about revealing Jesus. When you first met Jesus, there was a side of Jesus that you met. You met Jesus the Savior, the, the one who saved you. But listen, as you evolve in your relationship, you begin to know him as Lord. What, is, what, is, what does Lord mean? That Lord all of a sudden says, Erwin is dead to self. Dead to self. And I live for Christ. Am I perfect? Listen, follow me around. You will see that I am far from perfect. I need help. And as you saw this week, I don't have a problem sending out a text that y'all need to pray for me. Because some people are driving me crazy. I'm not being mean. I'm just being real. I have struggles too. But I have Jesus in my life. And he's able to help me. So here is the thing. I want you, man, this, this thing is so huge what we're going to talk about. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is real. And the gifts and, and, and everything that God wants to do and pour out into your life and into others is about one thing. It's about Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about how you look. It's not about how you feel. It's not, it's not about none of that. It's about Jesus. One thing, Jesus. It's the attribute, attributes of an awesome, holy God that loves people. Man, just let that sit for a moment. It is about Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 31. I'm going to 
attempt to even make a dent in this. It says this, it says, let me, let me do this one thing. Can you turn the page and go to the third page, technically the third page? And it says the goals of this study. Look at number one. I just wrote this down. I put this together. Number one is to tear down the negative connotations associated with the gifts of the Spirit. Notice that it's capital S right there because it's the gifts of the Spirit. That means Holy Spirit. When it's a little s, when God, you see that in the Bible, he's talking about your spirit because everyone has a spirit. Number two, how the Trinity of God functions through us in regards to the supernatural side of ministry. Number three, why would God want us to desire spiritual gifts? And number four, how do we get spiritual gifts? Amen? So I think I'm going to focus here on how the Trinity of God functions relating to the gifts. Now, verse 1 says this, now about spiritual gifts. And, this, and, and as I read verse 1, I want you to know that I, we're reading the Bible. It's not Irwin's idea. It's not Pastor Irwin's idea. It's not about, you know, this, that, or the other. It's just about Scripture. So it says this, now about spiritual gifts, brothers. That's all of you. I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, which means what before you used to serve God, somehow or other you were influenced and you were led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit, see the capital S, by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Listen, there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for what? The common good. The common good. It's given for the common good. If it's really of God, and it's really God using someone, it is for the common good. Let me tell you what this nation needs. This nation needs an awakening and a reality of God's existence. Many people don't believe in God. They've never had an encounter with God. But when you encounter the supernatural of God, there's sometimes things that happens in your life where even when you're going through something, listen, and I've been there where I've been going through something, and I was just like, you know what, God? I feel like you don't even hear me. But then I remember what he did where no one could get the credit except him. I was working when, when, when I received Jesus, and I was... Like just, I, 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 listen, I was going to clubs four nights a week. I'll tell you the days. It was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. I was partying like crazy. A lot of my friends in South Florida, they, they had a lot of music groups. We got into clubs for free, all of that stuff. I was partying it up, and all of a sudden, that night that I'm driving home, I have this encounter with God. Do you know that my focus switched from acting crazy in a lot of stuff that I was doing to one thing I had a disencounter with God that I could not deny. And my parents were nervous. They said, something's wrong with this guy because he was going out, going out, going out. Now he's home. And I'm not telling you that when you receive Jesus, you got to stay home. I'm not telling you that you can't have fun. I'm just saying to you what happened to me. I had such a real encounter with this real person named Jesus. And so what happened was I started to get on my knees by my bedside and I would grab my pillow and I would pray into the pillow because I did not want my father to hear what I was saying because I knew he thought something was wrong with me. Like I said, we were not raised in a Christian home. And I would cry and I would just say, God, I love you so much. God, I love you. You're amazing. I, I never experienced anything like this in my life. And I would talk to God and I would talk to God. And I would, listen, in the same thing that happened that one night kept happening in my room, I would feel his presence come into the room. 
I just weep. And I just said, man, I, I didn't even ask God for it. I just said, man, I love you. You're awesome. And man, it, and you can't hang out with God and not have that rub off out of you. You can't be with God. It's like hugging somebody and they got that really strong, cheap perfume. And you, and you hug them and all of a sudden you walk around all day smelling like that person. You can't be brush up against God and not have God ooze out of you. So I was working for my dad. My dad has a, 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 a garage door company in South Florida. And I was working for my dad. And I was carrying, a, I remember, I, I, like it was yesterday, I was carrying a 14-foot ladder. Now remember, I'm hanging out with Jesus in my room every day, every morning, waking up at 5 just to talk to him. And I have this ladder, and I'm walking. I got my tool belt on, and I'm walking with this ladder. We finished the job, and we were in this big industrial place where they make, uh, where they build boats. A huge, big warehouse, and I hear Irwin, and I turn around, and it was my friend Pat. This guy was the number one drug dealer in my high school. Man, he was always rocking something brand new. He always had coin in his pocket all the time and everything, and I see him, and he's like, hey, what's up? I haven't seen him since high school, so it's been about three to f three years, about three, three and a half years, and he's like, hey, what's up? And he starts coming to me, and he's smiling, and he stops, and he goes like this, and he goes, what is that? And I just took a step closer, and I said, that's the Holy Spirit. And he said, man, he goes, I feel it all over me. I said, Pat, God loves you, man. I said, it's not an accident that we bumped into one another. Do you know what he did moments later? He received Jesus in his heart. Asked God to forgive him. You can't, you can't hang out with God and not have God hang out with you. You can't be smeared up against God and not have God ooze out of you. So when he talks about these gifts, when he talks about them, we have made them like, see how he mentioned about idols? We have made them idols. Like, so one of them is miracles. One of them is uh, prophecy. One of them is discerning of spirits. I'm going to go over that in a minute and just give you a little bit of a foundation. We have made them idols in the church world. We have made superstars out of people of what God says should be normal for each one of us. We have made idols out of people. Come on now, am I preaching by myself? We have made idols, listen, we have, we have made idols of what should be natural in God. We've made idols out of people. So let me go through this real quick. He says, to one, verse 8, to one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by, what, by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues or languages. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Listen, all these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. So those nine gifts are broken up into three categories. There's the knowing gifts, there's three knowing gifts, there's three power gifts, and there's three vocal gifts. This is important because let's go through them real quick. So, so in verse 8 he says, to one there is given through the Spirit, so the Holy Spirit will pour upon you the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom is so important because you could be in a situation and you know what, you're looking around and you're like, man, it looks like... I need to do this, but you know what? All of a sudden, the gift of wisdom says, you know what? Do this, this, and this. I remember on a real estate transaction, I was sitting there, and I was looking at this piece of property, and I was like, man, what do I do? And all of a sudden, the Lord gave me wisdom. I said, God, what do I do about this? And the Lord showed me how to structure the deal. On one property that Joanne and I bought, listen, this is unheard of. We didn't spend one dollar out of our pocket. They gave us a check at closing. Do you see what I'm saying? I bought a property. I didn't put any down payment. I didn't pay for any closing costs, but they gave me money at closing. Have you ever heard of that before? I'm telling you right now. Why? Why? Because of the, I'm not smart enough. It's the gift, the gift of wisdom. Let's go to the next one. A word of knowledge. This is huge. 
Let me just, let me just whet your appetite on a couple of things. When I was a youth pastor, um, I went to this uh, youth meeting of youth pastors in the city. Some of you guys heard me share this before. I go into the meeting, and I knew just by sitting around some of the people, I just stayed quiet. I'm the new guy. And, I, and there was like maybe about 12 pastors in there. And I just knew that they didn't really believe like I believed. And I'm, I wasn't knocking them. I just knew like they just, they, they just didn't step out on the line and, and, and big things of faith. What I'm teaching right now, they would never teach to their kids, that kind of stuff. And so I just stayed quiet. And so at the end, after the, the one guy does a study, he says this. He said, he, said uh, um, he goes, let's pray for people. And he goes, I want to pray for this brother right here. And I saw this guy at the end of the table. He was super skinny. He was super skinny and his face was like sucked in like a prune. And I'm sitting there and all over the, all, the, the guy says this. He goes, man, we need to pray for so-and-so. The doctors cannot find what is happening with him. They don't know what's happening with him. He's losing weight. He's gone to specialists, all these things. Now, listen, I'm a young youth pastor. I'm like 24 years old. I'm just sitting there like, man, what do I know? And I'm just sitting there. And all of a sudden, the Lord tells me, he says, tell him to eat raw lemons every day. I'm like, now listen, I don't know these people. They probably think, oh, he's from that such and such church and everything. And you want to know something? I just, I just go, I did one of these and my hand goes up slow. And they said, yeah, Pastor Irwin. And I said, hey, I said, I just, I just, man, I just felt led to, t the guy's name was Kelly. The youth pastor's name was Kelly. I said, Kelly, listen, man. I said, I don't know you, man, but I just heard in my heart that God told me to tell you to eat raw lemons. <laughs> it was quiet. Like, it was so quiet. Like, like the guy who invited me was like, man, you know, I, I don't know him. Like, I, I don't know who that guy is, you know? And, 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 and so, so all of a sudden, this one Spanish dude, maybe he was trying to stick up for another Spanish dude, but this one Spanish dude says, you know what? When I was in high school, I remembered that, they, that these uh, uh, sh uh, ship guys or these guys on a boat got shipwrecked on an island and all there was was lemons. And back in the day, there was scurvy. And he said people were just losing weight. They didn't know what to do. But they landed on this island. And after like a couple of weeks on the island, everyone was cured of scurvy because they, all they could eat was the lemons. And I was like, man, I don't know any of that stuff. You know, I cheated in high school. I don't know any of that. But all I can tell you is that what I'm hearing, and you want to know something, guys, I tell you that God is my witness. A month later, a youth pastor says, hey, Pastor Kelly wanted to get a message to you. He said, he wants you to know that the doctors are completely baffled. His weight is going up. He did exactly what he's doing. And listen, he's healed. Come on, give God praise, man. Listen. That's, that's a word of knowledge. It's something that, that, it's something that God gives you, okay? So what is, what is uh, the next one? It says faith. Faith. I'm, I'm going to uh, go through these real quick so I can let you guys go. But listen, faith, something supernatural that happens that God gives you a boldness in faith. My wife actually has this really strong in her life when she negotiates any, any kind of business deals. When my wife negotiates, she has great faith. She has so much faith that when she's negotiating, I kid you not, I do this. Listen, I walk away because she's almost insulting them. She tries to get them so low. She, I'm like, man, babe, listen, you know, these people got to make money too. You know what I'm saying? But I just sort of walk away. She has great faith to believe for things, man. It's a gift of faith. God will give you faith in all situations. The gift of healing. When it is necessary, God will use you to pray for someone and so that you can see the supernatural touch of the living God over their life. This is real stuff. Come on, I'm not by myself, am I? Okay, I hope not. Listen, this is real, real stuff. How about miraculous powers? Did Jesus operate in miraculous powers? Of course he did. Of course he did. Do you know that a little boy comes to Jesus and he has, what, five loaves and two fish? And there's 15,000 people? Do you know what Jesus did? 
He blessed it and prayed for it, and multiplication happened. How, would you say that's miraculous? It's something supernatural. He fed all those people. I believe the Bible. He did it. It still happens today. Listen, prophecy, this is where a lot of people get jacked up because you got prophet so-and-so who labels himself prophet so-and-so and says, man, the, the Lord gave me a word for you. You got to be careful what you hear. If you have a pastor, if someone tells you, the Lord told me to tell you, you should tell your pastor, hey, so-and-so told me this word. Can you judge it? Can you let me know how you feel about it? I have told people, I have looked them in the eye, and I said, listen, I said, that's not of God. And I've looked at other people, I said, you need to run with that. Because what, ha what happens is, is people just want to throw around words. You got to be careful with people, man. You can't, you, people have been damaged. Joanne and I know people that, that, that someone prophesied to them. Now, this is back in the day when this sort of used to happen a lot more. But back in the day, someone said, oh, you and you, you're supposed to be married. They're divorced now. You got to be careful with that stuff. You got to let the Lord speak to you about things. A prophecy should be a confirmation of something in your life. And let me say this to you. Whether you want to believe me or not, the potential for you to operate in every single thing that I'm talking about is already inside of you guys. It's already in you. And it's for one cause. Listen, one cause. His name is just glorify Jesus. Because the second you start to say, look at what I did. Look how I heard. Guess what? The river will stop flowing. It won't happen. You say, well, Pastor Irwin, don't you have another message in your, in your notes over there? Maybe something that's more relatable. I'm going through relationship issues. I'm going through these issues. I'm going through financial issues. Let me say this to you. Jesus needs to be real on the earth. And as a Christian and as a, as a believer, man, we can't just be sleeping and, you know, I can't, I can't stand watching the news, watching another person commit suicide. My youth pastor walked up to two guys at a McDonald's on the table, and he had a, he had a word of, of knowledge for them. And he said, listen, he goes, man, you guys need to give your lives to Christ right now. Don't get, don't get messed up with all the, you know, drinking this whole case of, of, uh, of beer and stuff like that. And you know what, you know what the guy said? He just broke down crying in a McDonald's. He said, we were going to drink these, this case and we were going to commit suicide tonight. Wow. One guy hearing God's voice prevented two precious people from committing suicide. It wasn't my youth pastors like where it's just like, oh man, my youth pastor is amazing. It was just, listen, just listen to God. Listen to God. Let's finish this real quick. Discerning of spirits. Um, I actually like this one. Every single one of you should ask God that, God, I want to be more discerning. Because whether it's a business deal, whether it's a relationship with a person, they could look all good on the outside. But all of a sudden, in your spirit, God says no. Or God may say yes. It could look ridiculous. And, but God says do it. A friend of ours named Eric, he was driving on the highway. Now check this out. The Lord says to him, buy this piece of property. It was in the middle of nowhere. He buys the property because he knows the voice of God. And he's like, oh, he's just holding on to this property. Do you know what happens? A year later, Chevron came to him and said, listen, we're, we're, we're moving the highway, we're shifting the highway, and it's actually going to go through your property, and we need your property. He bought the piece of property for like $20,000. They, they sold it to him for millions. It's important to hear the voice of God. God will speak to you about situations in your life. Amen? And then, of course, the most controversial of all, is tongues and the interpretation of tongues. And I do, definitely don't have time to, to, to fully explain this, even just in one service. But there's something supernatural that happened in Acts chapter 2 when the church was praying. Jesus told them, wait for Jerusalem for the promise that I have for you. And they were praying for about 10 days in this upper room. And all of a sudden, man, it was power uh, just came into that place. And these people got baptized in the spirit. And they began to speak with these languages. And it's something supernatural that happens. Because when you pray in tongues, what the Bible says, 
Sometimes you pray the mysteries of God. You don't know what you're saying. And that's where the next one comes in, is that there's some people that God has given them, you know, enables that gifting to interpret what that person is saying. Listen, I know I'm, I'm going to say something far-fetched to you. You may not believe this, but I know friends that they have gone, um, and, and I'm talking about firsthand, they have gone to China, places in China when the underground church, like 15 years ago when the underground church was more prevalent, now China's a little bit more open to the gospel. But when you used to have to hide and stuff, they would go and they would take these guys on scooters, missionaries and stuff, and they would take them on scooters to these secret places and they would pass them from one scooter to another scooter just in case they're being followed. And then the preacher ends up and he finds all these Chinese people on the floor just crying and asking, God, move, move. Here comes the preacher. And they said, please tell us the word because they only had pages of the Bible. But do you know that there were some times that, that uh, they, they began to, the, the, uh, the, the preacher would begin to speak in tongues. And all of a sudden the Chinese people completely understood what he was saying. And he's like, man, I've never spoken Chinese before in my life. I know that sounds crazy. It doesn't sound relevant for 2017. But guess what? You know, I just, I just made a decision for myself that this is true. I've made a decision that in spite of what's going on politically, what's going on in, 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 in weather, what's going on in all these different things, I believe in a big, huge God that sent his son to die on the cross for the sins of the world, and he gave his life for us. And you know what? If it's in this book, and he takes a whole chapter to talk about this thing that is supernatural, then you know what? Then why can't I believe more that the supernatural would work through me? If you want it for your own glory, if you're not, if you're not inspired to do this to help others, listen, ask God for something else. But if it's to help other people, what do you have to lose by asking God, God, fill me with your presence more. Help me to hear you, God. Help me to hear your will for my life. One decision in God. I was dealing with a, you know, and I'm, I don't mean to use financial situations. I was dealing with something. I got this letter and this guy was um, trying to sue me and something. And I was just like, man, you know, I was like, man, Father, what do I do? I mean, this is crazy, this guy's, you know, and I'm just sitting there praying. And the Lord says, call this person. Call this person. I was like, okay. I call this person. I'm just like, hey, um, I'm just calling you. I know you don't know me, but I just have this situation. And he goes, oh, he goes, according to such and such this, they can't do this, that, and the other. I wrote one letter by myself. I didn't need an attorney. I wrote the letter and I said, hey, because of such and such this, and you know what? They couldn't take my money. Just everyone say this. He's not smart enough. He's not smart. I'm not smart enough. But God knows everything. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Do you know why you should pray for discernment and to hear the voice of God? Fellas, if you have that female pressing up on you and she looks good and everything's, everything just seems to look good, listen, you better follow the checks in your spirit because there's some crazy females out there. And girls, everybody, listen, I was, I are one before, before Jesus, but you know, those guys that come up to you and it's all nice and talk and smooth and everything like that, listen, you got to follow your spirit. I've told people to their face, I said, listen, I said, I love you, but I got to let you know that 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 person is not for you. I know I got, God dealt with me. I just want to let you know you're asking me. So I'm telling you, I wasn't invited to the wedding. I wasn't invited to their wedding. And it bothered me because we were sort of close. That guy ended up beating her. I was, I was at, their ha at this family's house. The girl is in the closet. She's crying. And she says, Pastor, what do I do? And I said, don't marry him. Beat her. He was in, my, he was in the youth group. A Christian. Just because you stand in a church doesn't make you a Christian. Just like any more than if you stand in a garage, it makes you a car. Amen. 
I didn't even, listen, I didn't scratch the surface, but I want to tell you, I'm going to ask Nevin to come. I want to say this to you guys. God is real. He's powerful. He is not soft. He's, he's, he's a powerful, real God. And he knows what you're going through. He knows your issues. He knows your hang-ups, your hang-ins, and your hang-outs. Listen, he knows all those things about you. And there's one thing that I can tell you. In spite of you, he loves you. In spite of yourself, he loves you. And I want to tell you today, I want to tell you today that the death that he paid Jesus was a horrible death because sin is expensive. When they told me, when my friend Xavier told me about Jesus, you didn't have to convince me that I was a sinner. I was like, I had the t-shirt, the tape, the hat, and everything. I knew who I was. It was easy to receive Jesus. I want you to stand to your feet for a moment as, as we close here.